So this past week, there has been discussion of God and meditation and contemplation upon Om. The sutras are in book one, 23 through 27. This is truly week six of our study, though in the uh, schedule, it's week mm, two in June or something <laughs> like that. So never you mind, it's week six. And we're beginning week seven. This uh, literal translation of the first sutra in our week study, which is Sutra 23, begins with or in the uh, literal translation, or, because it's a continuation of the teaching on how samadhi may be quickly realized. So last week, the discussion was through the different stages of samadhi, um, different levels of intensity in practice and how that allows one to experience samadhi quickly. And this week, or samadhi may be quickly realized through surrender to God. God as Ishwara, or in Hebrew, Emmanuel, which means God with us, is God in creation. So this Ishwara is often seen as our personal image of God or God that we can relate to, as opposed to uh, Brahman, which is the ultimate reality that does not contain attributes, which, as you know, is very difficult to contemplate and realize while embodied. So we have the blessing of the instruction from Patanjali and the yoga teachings in general that there is this um, aspect of the infinite which can be known by us while embodied. Among the expressive aspects of the infinite, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, omnipotent God, which as Sri Royji puts it, is the presence of God which cannot be seen, but we can become aware of and know that we abide in it that this reality of God extends from the field of absolute existence being into the physical realm. In How to Know God, Christopher Isherwood and Swami Prabhavananda say this. What is important is the concept of devotion Liberation, as we've already seen, can be reached without devotion to God, but this is a subtle and dangerous path, threading its way through the pitfalls of ambition and pride. Devotion to a personal ideal of God brings with it a natural inclination to humility and service. It sweetens the dryness of intellectual discrimination, and calls forth the highest kind of love of which one is capable. We cannot even imagine Brahman or ultimate reality until the moment of our liberation, but we can all imagine Ishwara according to our different natures. For Ishwara has attributes which our mind can recognize. Ishwara is all that we can know of the reality until we pass beyond Prakriti or manifest reality. That is so helpful, don't you think? 
you know, when we're um, studying the deep teachings and we're contemplating Om and we're considering ultimate reality without attributes. Yes, in deep meditation, we can um, seek to merge with that. But for most of us, the concept of Ishwara or God with us is a powerful tool for propelling us forward on the spiritual path. Devotional surrender. And Roji reminds us, as Umaji reminds us, as our own practice reminds us, in yoga, surrender to God is first and foremost a surrender of the sense of separate self. That sense of being separate from God or surrendering to the reality of wholeness in which we live. I'm so grateful for the path of yoga. I think in the, um, I had a period where a major obstacle in my practice was believing that I had to choose either or. I could either be a yogi that um, walked the path of personal God, Ishwara, and um, imagined or, at, or had communion in God um, as Ishwara, or I needed to get beyond that and to um, be able to contemplate ultimate reality instead and that there was this either or, as we know, duality or either or sets up this flip flopping in the mind and is an obstacle. So I went through that for quite some time where it was an obstacle. And then I found that the teachings were saying or, but also and, because as Roji said, the reality of God extends from the field of ab absolute existence being into the physical realm. And if we are aware of the reality that we, everything, not just us, but everything emanates from that supreme reality and exists within that supreme reality, then why not in manifest realm can we um, relate to God in nature, God here, now? As I live and breathe. <laughs> so that really helped me to continue to come back to this section of the sutras and the other sections in the sutras and in the Bhagavad Gita to the idea that Devotional surrender to God with us is another path to realization, to self-realization and direct experience of ultimate reality. Sutra 124. In Roy Davis's translation, God, the cosmic soul, is not influenced or restricted by karma. God's cosmic forces produced and regulate the universe. The reality of God is not influenced by the effects of causes that it originates. The transcendent reality of God is pure existence beyond space time. God as Brahman, whose isness has no attributes is not influenced or restricted by karma. 
God is before karmic action or influence. So Brahman's expressive power manifested space-time into existence. All emanates from Brahman. And again, Brahman cannot be known from an embodied state or by the mind, but we can and do merge or are absorbed into Brahman when we transcend to this body-mind existence as awakened soul. In Sutra 125, God's omniscience is unsurpassed. So think of Sutra 24, continuing into 25, and say, therefore, God cannot be compared to anything that exists in this realm of reality. This is Brahman ultimate, the ultimate reality. Continuing on to Sutra 26, it says that the eternally existent before time and space God <laughs> is known as the teacher of all teachers. And why would that be? Because all wisdom emanates from the source of wisdom. So I like that new name for God. Eternally existent before time and space God. <laughs> and in Sutra 27, it says that the word sound that expresses God is Om. Whereas Royji says the evidential indication of God is all. 